Yo, what's good? Big Z here. I'm finally back. Sorry I missed the last couple uploads. I just had a busy end of the summer. But now that it's fall, I have way more time to work on some new videos for you guys and some new music and everything else. So anyway, today I'm going to show you guys how to make this. Dance with So this is my remake of Dance With Me by Shipwreck. If you haven't heard of Shipwreck, they're a really sick tech house duo. I think they're from America, but they've been coming out with a lot of great tech house songs recently. They used to make some like future bass stuff, but their tech house stuff is just so clean. All the mixes are so nice and clean, and all the sounds they use are really cool. So that's why I wanted to do this remake. By the way, all the drum samples and presets that I use in this remake, you can download for free below. I also have the project file for free below, but I use a bunch of different plugins, so I can't promise that it'll work for you. And I know a lot of you guys aren't Logic users, so that's why I'm giving you guys the samples and the presets this time. So I guess we can maybe start with the first lead. So I'll show you guys what I did to get that sound, because there's a lot of different things going on here. So first of all, the preset is from Serum. Um, in the basic shapes wavetable, it's just this kind of like half pulse wave. I don't know the exact name of it, but I added this sync feature, no window, and turned it up to around there. You can see how messing with that really changes the character of the sound. And then I have envelope one down here that's controlling the amplitude of the sound, but also it's controlling a filter in the effects section, which I'll get into. The only other thing on this main tab is that mono is checked down here in the voicing section. Then in the effects section, I'll turn off all these effects so we can see what the raw sound sounds like. So really envelope one that's modulating the cutoff of this filter is doing most of the work for the sound. These other things are kind of just adding ear candy like spreading it out a little bit with the dimension expander, compressing it, um, adding some distortion, phaser, chorus. So all that stuff just helps polish the sound. So for external processing, I have some more stuff going on. So I'll turn all the external processing off, then turn it back on. So I've stacked a couple different EQs here because I couldn't get it sounding exactly how I wanted with just one EQ. So there's the first EQ. Here's the second EQ, here's the third EQ, and now it's just me shaping the sound as I was mixing. Because if I played the sound in the mix without those EQs, then I add the EQs in. It makes a big difference in how the sound is shaped. So other than the EQs, I just have some reverb and delay. So this Echo Boy is on there, just providing like a really short delay with the feedback all the way down. You can barely even notice it. Just kind of puts it in like a little space and has a really short echo on there. So then same idea with the reverb. I have this super short reverb that I'm sending it to down here. So first in the chain, I have a transient designer, just taking out the transients so the reverb can be cleaner. So then I have the actual reverb, which is only 0.85 seconds of decay time because I want it to be really short and just kind of put the sound in a room. So I'll take the reverb off and put it back on and keep switching it so you can see how it affects the sound. It sounds subtle, but it makes a really big difference to put it in that little space. And then I just have this longer reverb down here um, with 1.26 seconds of decay time that I'm automating in throughout the drop. So this automation right here is me automating the reverb send level. Just kind of add some tension to the drop. So enough about this sound, I still got the basses to talk about and the other cool lead. So this crazy sounding lead, when I listened to the original song, it just had a certain character to it that made me think that they made it inspire. Now I have no idea if they actually made it inspire, but I remade it inspire. 
because Spire just has this certain character to it that I thought the sound had. So in Spire, the sound is from a preset that I messed around with. I'll try to redo exactly what I did the first time. So I'm just gonna duplicate this track, bring the MIDI down. Um, I'll open Spire here. I'm actually gonna restart Spire. So now I have a new instance of Spire. I went to Factory Bank 2. Then I went down to Leads and I did Hyper Lead 2. And I took off the delay and the reverb. Pulled the sustain down, the release down, and messed with the attack and decay a little bit. And then I did a couple things in the oscillator section. I just made the, both the oscillators a little wider. Um, I think I decreased the detune a little bit on both oscillators. Then I added a third oscillator a noise oscillator, just to add some crunchiness to the sound. So I think I brought it up two octaves, mess with those controls, and you'll see how much this noise oscillator helps the sound out. If I turn these other ones off, you can hear it by itself. So I just wanted to mix it in around there. I probably messed with a couple more things, but that's pretty much how I got this sound. Um, if you have Spire, the preset for that is also included below. But um, for the MIDI for this sound, I tried using an LFO to get that 30 second like quick wobble sound, but the LFO wasn't working that well, so I actually ended up just writing in the 30 second notes to the MIDI itself. So that's why I have these short 30 second notes here. I just thought that sounded better than using an LFO. For external processing, I just have this compressor and I have this EQ shaping the sound a little bit. And one of the most underrated features of FabFilter's EQs are this gain scale function where you can control how much of the EQ you applied will actually work. So I'll just demonstrate it. A lot of the time that you apply an EQ cut or boost, you tend to overdo it a little bit. So this tool is really helpful just to see what it would sound like if you scale it back a little bit. And that's what I ended up doing with this EQ. So definitely a helpful tip. And both these leads are being sidechained by this Volume Shaper 4 plugin right here, just at 70% wet. Another cool thing is this pitch bend at the end here with this lead. And I just did that in the MIDI here. I just went to the pitch bend section and messed with the pitch a little bit. It would sound cool to mess with the MIDI a little more, I think. Like on this one, if we made the MIDI go up in pitch at the beginning, let's see how that sounds. I think that sounds pretty dope, but in the original, they just have it like this. So anyway, let's move on to the bass sounds. The bass sounds are super sick and they're really clean sounding. So if we just mute these leads, we can really hear the basses a little bit better. So anyway, all these bass sounds are in Serum. You can download them all below, so I'll just go through them quickly. Um, they're all just playing C notes in the MIDI. So they're just trading off C notes, and there's these bass stabs in between that play off the main bass rhythm. So anyway, this main bass sound is in Serum. Um, it's just an analog BD sine wave, wavetable position all the way to the right to bring out some more harmonics. Then I have this shaped envelope right here. Mono's checked in the voicing tab. Um, in the effects section, I just have multiband compression, tube distortion, and this filter that's being controlled by this envelope. Then to give it that attack I was looking for, I have envelope three controlling the master pitch. Then for external processing, I have this Renaissance compressor going into this EQ right here. 
And then I'm sending all my bases to this base bus to compress them together with another Renaissance compressor and also this volume shaper for sidechain. So I layered this sound with another bass sound that's super low in the mix. Just to give it a little bit more harmonics. It's a really simple sound. It's just a square wave with some effects on there. But I just thought the bass needed a little more harmonics in the higher end. So I added the square wave and I cut everything off below like 500 hertz. And it just added some nice harmonics to the original bass. Then the bass stab sound awesome. So this bass stab is just a saw wave, three octaves down. It's got this envelope here that is controlling the cutoff of this low pass filter. So without these effects, So it's really all the filter doing the work and I just have this external EQ that's cutting off everything above like 450 hertz. The other bass sound is really similar, it's just a square wave. I don't even think this other saw wave is doing anything. Yeah, it's just a square wave, three octaves down, um, same exact effects as the other bass dab. Also I should mention I found the exact same vocal sample they used for this song. It was from Splice and it was called... HD spoken dance with me. Here's what it sounds like. Dance with me. So I just took that sample and um, I just messed with like the foreman and the pitch and some different things with manipulator down here. Um, so I just messed around with some EQs and compressions and stuff to get the vocal sample sounding how I want it. Then I bounced that in place. And here is just the audio file from that. Dance with me. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> It's really a stack of three different me's down here. <laughs> but I just added some different EQs and manipulator to just to mess with the sound some more and get it sounding like the original. But I've bounced these in place, so you don't need to worry about them. I'll actually just delete them probably. So in the um, project file, if you download it, you'll just get the vocal samples already processed and bounced in place. <laughs> Dance with I'll just solo all the drums real quick so you guys can hear them. Shipwreck uses super clean, tight sounding drum samples that are all really short, and that just gives the mix so much room to breathe, which is part of the reason why their mixes sound so clean. So here's what the drums sound like all together. So I've done various processing on each of these drum samples just to get it to fit nicely in the mix and sound really clean. So I've exported all those drum samples and like I said, you can download all of them below for free along with the presets and the project file if you want it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify below. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Dance with